Then inside the machine, there's a device like this. The ons and offs are used to power a group of electromagnets which push out a tiny row of steel pins. It's funny, really, though, to have all this high-tech equipment to produce something that looks considerably worse than ordinary typing. The next sort of printer to be developed was the daisy wheel. This has uh, a plastic wheel with the actual type on, a bit like a typewriter. This is fixed to an electric motor that rotates the wheel with a sensor on the back to stop it in precisely the right place. And then there's simply a hammer, which is fixed to an electromagnet, to hammer the type onto the page. Oh, seen this one, Miss M? You must be joking. You call this scrawl a job application? <sighs> I won't be interviewing him either. We'll have to re-advertise. Coffee break, I think. Hmm. Mm. All right. The daisy wheel was a marketing breakthrough. For the first time, anybody could write a professional-looking letter. Come in and try one. Yeah, I might. I could go for that. Wicked. This man looks very good. Don't mm. you love the name? Mm. <laughs> we'll see him. You! You're Get out of How dare oh. you! Outrageous. The success of the daisy wheel led to the development of much faster and quieter printers. These have returned to the idea of creating the letters out of patterns of dots, like the pin matrix printers. Some are laser printers, which are quite complicated, but others simply squirt blobs of ink. Although our homemade version is a bit crude, inkjet printers can actually squirt very tiny drops of ink with great accuracy. This is an actual print head the computer powers tiny electric heating elements which create bubbles and pour sink out through these tiny holes. The drops are so small they can form almost any style of type. But although computers are getting more and more sophisticated, the reality is usually rather less glamorous. If you'd like to come this way, sir. This is Miss Mathias, our head of department. Hello, I'm Osbert Greed from head office, here to ascertain whether your good self and subordinates are fully cognizant with every aspect of computer usage. I, I think I follow you. Of course, we all find our PCs absolutely, um... Kindly demonstrate. Oh, uh, yes, I'll, I'll network everyone in, in the department to confirm current status. Oh, Mr. Jones, Ooh. put the manuals away. Joan, don't use that old thing. Sorry. Pretend you understand the new one. Oh, no, Brian's got his shoes off. And where's his computer? Brian, get it out. Mm -hmm. I mean your computer. Mm. You should be writing letters by hand. Oh, Polly, you're being networked. You must confirm your current status. But I'm so... Bored. <laughs> Terry, you'll get us all into trouble. We're being inspected to see if we're computer literate. Hmm. The conclusions of my investigations will be issued subsequently in triplicate to this department. The new computer users are completely helpless if something goes wrong. Everyone has stories of floppy disks introducing rogue instructions or viruses. In reality, catastrophic events are rare. Much the most common problems are loose connections or coffee in the keyboard. The sheer complexity of the software, though, does lead to idiosyncrasies. Mine has a habit of occasionally freezing up, so that uh, whatever I type, how, how, whatever keys I type, 
but none of them do anything. The only way to sort it out is to switch the computer off and then switch it on again. And then I lose everything that I've typed in the last few minutes. Personally, I find this reassuring. It reminds me that my word processor is just a useful gadget full of transistor switches, not some superhuman intelligence.